Welcome back boys. I'm going to share with you some news on my Honda Civic EF hatch project. This is super exciting, but I have a new engine for this car. Now, if you haven't been here before, my name is Rob. I build a lot of stuff. Actually, this is my new channel. So if you guys want to show some support for this thing, if you learn anything, hit like, leave a comment. Much appreciated. You might have seen one of my previous videos where I discuss why I think the EF Civic SI is going to be a future collector car and why I love owning this thing. To me, it's one of the best daily drivers you can get. However, the last video I did on this thing, I was explaining that I had some engine burning problems to the point where the back of the car was becoming black with uh, oil particles. So I did a leak down on the engine and it turns out my rings are bad. So this kind of forced me into a dilemma. Do I rebuild the engine that is in the Civic, which is a D16, a single overhead cam, or do I swap it? Now, the most common swap for the EF chassis is a Honda B-Series. This is a dual overhead cam with VTEC, yo. But today it's becoming more and more popular to swap in a K-Series, which is even crazier. However, that does require a lot more fabrication and a lot more custom parts. Given that the fact my SI is fairly unmolested, I think I would rather go with a B-Series. Like if you're gonna build a, a fast Civic from like a DX or something that's not really, you know, very desirable. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think they're all desirable, but if the car is so close to being like factory plus already, I'd rather go with a B series just because that is a factory plus option. Again, that engine came out in 1989 in Japan in the JDM Acura Integra and the JDM Honda Civic and CRX. Now, like a lot of the projects I have going on on my YouTube channels, um, it starts because someone sends me a link to something because they know that I've been kind of looking for it. Again, Jason, thank you for making me spend money, but this is what I picked up. B16, boys. Now this thing, I'll get into how I got it in a little bit, but I kind of want to cover for those who don't know why this engine is totally and completely badass. Let's start with they're incredibly reliable and the horsepower they make for the displacement is leaps and bounds above anything that was available back when this engine came out. Now again, the engine that's in my car, single overhead cam, makes 108 horsepower. This thing will make about 160 horsepower and has a red line of 9,000 RPM, which is awesome. When this engine was new, it pretty much outperformed all the other four cylinders on the market. And not only did it do that, it did that while weighing less than most of them. Why? mainly due to VTEC. Now, what does VTEC stand for? It stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control. If you go way back in Honda's history, Honda didn't start out making cars, they started out making motorcycles. So a lot of the technology that you see in their cars comes from the motorcycle market first. In this case, it came from, I think it was a 1983 Honda CBR, and that went from two valves to four valves at a certain RPM. This is different. Instead of opening another set of valves, it's using all four valves per cylinder, even in the lower RPM range. But what it does is it has a different camshaft profile for both the intake cam and the exhaust cam uh, to provide more lift and duration at higher RPMs. Now, all the other engines at the time pretty much had a, a camshaft that was a compromise. You know, when you're designing a cam, you can have it be really good for drivability down at lower RPM, or it can be an absolute screamer on the track and produce the most power you can have but around town, it's gonna to have a poor idle, it's gonna to lose torque, it's just gonna be annoying to drive. So what VTEC did is it allowed them to not compromise. They could have a cam for around town drivability and a cam that uh, really extracts the most horsepower you can out of a naturally aspirated motor. I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. Now, keep in mind, when this thing was new, this was also when Honda was dominating F1. Now, a lot of this technology trickled down into both the engines and the chassis design themselves, with a lot of the Hondas from that golden era having double wishbone suspension. Now, I mentioned this thing weighs less than most of the competition. That's because the block is aluminum. At the time, most of the other four cylinders were using a cast iron block, which is significantly heavier. The camshafts themselves were some sort of exotic alloy that they were using in the F1 cars at the time. The cam gears are a sintered powdered metal to reduce even more rotational mass. There are so many decisions made on the development of this engine that are small improvements. And when you stack all those up, you get this engine that stands kind of head and shoulders above everything else that was available at the time. 
Now, even today, a lot of cars have variable valve timing, but they gradually change. And that's cool. It's actually better for drivability. It's better for performance. But I don't know if it's because I'm getting old, but on a street car, to me, metrics aren't really that important anymore. I don't really care if a car is that fast. What I want it to be is rewarding to drive. And what makes something rewarding to drive is the experience, the, the visceral sounds, the vibrations. And on these old school VTEC engines, it's not a gradual change. It's like you're driving, you're accelerating, you're accelerating, and then bang! It's not like turbocharging where it's just gonna like blow the doors off of something, but it is fun. I mean, that's, that's why I like that car in the first place. It is a fun car to drive. So with this engine, which is extra fun, I'm hoping that I have more fun because I don't know what else we're here for, really. Now I gotta tell you the story about how I got this thing in the first place. So it was about 8.30 p.m. on a Thursday and one of my buddies sent me a link to an ad on Facebook Marketplace and it just said, B16, $500, and it had some pictures of this engine. First thing I did to make sure that it wasn't a scam was I downloaded the images to my computer and did a Google reverse image search. This allows you to see if that image is being used elsewhere on the internet. In this case, it was not used elsewhere on the internet, so I figured they were legit photos of an engine. Could still be a scam, so I messaged the guy. His English was pretty bad, and he wanted me to meet him in a very questionable part of Milwaukee at about 9.30 at night. Now. That's typically a bad idea. What's the worst that could happen? Get stabbed? So I hid the money in my car. I drove down there. And as I'm driving down there, the dude messages me and changes the locations on me. But I figured, you know what? I've gone this far. Let's just keep going and see what happens. The other thing that was really funny about buying this is that I expected him to have a truck or I expected to go someplace nearby. But no, he had it in the backseat of his 90s Civic, just like sitting there. And not only did he have the engine, it came with the intake manifold and the whole wiring harness and a transmission with a short shifter. So yeah, I mean the parts here alone, you typically the swaps today are going for like $2,500 to $3,500. I was just like, here's the $500. I can't look at this thing. It's dark anyway. I'm just buying it. And at this point, worst case, I got a VTEC head and a transmission for 500 bucks, which is fine. After that, we hoofed it into the back of the Honda Insight because my van was not running. There was a problem with the distributor. So all I had for a driving car with a cargo area was the Insight. So yeah, you can fit a B16 into the back of an Insight. No problem as long as you tip it over. And what was kind of funny about that is dude told me there was no fluids in it. He was wrong. The valve cover wasn't even bolted down and it dumped a ton of oil into the cargo area of the Insight, which is directly above the electronics and the hybrid batteries. Hopefully that's not a problem. Uh, it kind of trashed my interior to fit all this dirty crap inside the car. But again, worth it. So that's about it for this episode. If you learned anything, if you like this, click like and subscribe. Uh, otherwise, you might miss out. Again, this is a new channel, so appreciate the support. In the next video, we're going to be doing a leak down test on it and see if this $500 engine will run and is in good condition as advertised. Stay tuned. All right. See you, dudes.